Hello and welcome to ECE656 Database Systems. In this particular video lecture I will cover the administrative issues in this course and I will start by describing how I will run pre-recorded video lectures. The way I will do them is I have slides that I will present and there are two things that I will do. One is I may annotate the slides, for example in this slide. I'm going to circle this and say the major source of information for what I'm discussing is the syllabus, please read it. This will allow me also to switch back and forth to other sources. In particular, for example, I have Piazza. If you're wondering what I'm running this on, I'm running it on a Samsung tablet and it allows me to switch between things very easily. This is the database course. You will have been added to this if you are registered for the course in Quest or if I have your contact information and have approved adding you to the course um, as necessary for overriding certain prerequisites. At the moment there are no posts in the course but I've uploaded certain resources. Okay, you can view the resources here. In particular, there's the syllabus. If you want to see the syllabus, I happen to show it here, open it here. I will cover that shortly. For now, we will go back to Piazza. Other things, the lecture notes will be here. At the moment, the only lecture note is the admin issues, which is this set of slides that we're covering today, well, actually, there is all of one slide, okay? Um, the other things that you will find, old lecture notes. So I've put up old notes. If you wish to, you can get a hold of them. You can look at them. For the most part, the notes are reasonably good as slides, but as the syllabus says, the slides are not sufficient to understand the material. I'll talk about that in a minute. Assignments and solutions will be placed in their respective locations, as will project information. Um, general resources will also be available there. So, what's the admin issues that we want to deal with? Well, the syllabus. Let's go through the syllabus briefly. Okay. I'm assuming, I'm expecting, I'm not assuming, I'm expecting you to read the syllabus, okay? Um, again, this, this material I can just go through and describe, okay? Um, in general, I will go through and describe things for you. In the case of this, I think it's self-explanatory. Um, it covers the material we're talking about. Um, you should have a reasonable comprehension of mathematics and logic, set theory, functions, relations, closures, proofs. I will be putting up some review notes on that material that will help because we are covering relational databases. You should have a command of um, one of the major programming languages, C, C++, Java. Um, those are the main ones that you should know how to do. You should know B trees, hash functions, big O notation, processes, threads, memory management, things like that. Um, I expect you to have command of language in order to be able to um, read material, in order to be able to write assignments and projects. Um, you will need a laptop because you will need to be doing programming, I'm assuming, or, or a computer of whatever type. I mean, it doesn't have to be a laptop per se, but you need a computer and an internet connection. Um, a tablet is not likely to be sufficient. Um, all information will be posted on the course website, which will be Learn or Piazza. I'm going to probably use Piazza for most things. Um, and use Learn for additional things, um, but it will all be here. I will also be posting polls, or um, you can do polls at various times if you want. Um, I will do polls in order to get feedback from the class, uh, questions, um, postings of questions, etc. Um, oh. 
One of the other things I will do in the process of giving video lectures, and this is rather important, this is my whiteboard. It is Samsung Notes. I'm able to write on it so that you can see material on it and do that. So, if we're talking about admin issues today, read syllabus. Okay. Um, number two will come at some point, but we'll worry about that later. Okay. Questions. Ask questions. Well, there's, there's two ways to ask questions. We will normally have a synchronous meet time okay that i will set up i will probably use ms teams you as students all have access to ms teams i will almost certainly use ms teams to set up synchronous um video meets this is primarily for question and answer okay uh, I will be doing the content in the form of video lectures. I will be referencing the textbook. The textbook you really should get a copy of. The seventh edition came out in 2019, 2020. Um, do you need the, that edition? No. Probably anything fourth edition and beyond is sufficient however my references will be to that seventh edition um there's also a uh, date uh, chris date if i remember correctly his first name uh is one of the co-founders along with cod of the relational database he has a very good text that's available online um i have a reference to it online this is the one, database types and the relational model, okay? This is an extremely high quality text. I will also be referencing it through the course of lectures and materials, okay? Um, so, content is video lectures, slides, readings okay the content will not be it, it's not that it's not important to have these uh, meet times but they're primarily intended for you to have prepared for them and in preparing for them to be able to ask intelligent questions about things that you don't understand. Um, you, I, I may cover a certain amount of explanation if it was not understood in a lecture, but I will reference lectures and readings as much as anything. Um, because they're Q&A, they, they will not start till the 15th. There is no point in having a Q&A at this point, so ugh. apologies for that. We'll make that a little more legible. S -E -P -T. 15th September. Okay. And nominally they go from 2.30 to 5.20. That's the scheduled lecture time. In practice, I will be available at 2.30, 2.30, but don't expect me to hang around for more than an hour if nobody is showing up and asking questions. Um, I'm expecting you will show up and ask questions. I'm expecting as you have assignments and projects to do, you will have questions. So that's one form of question asking. The second form of question asking... Okay... That's one form. The second form, Piazza. Okay. If you're embarrassed to ask a question because you think it's a silly question, ask it anonymously. Okay. Um, 
In particular, if you have a question with 90% probability, at least 10% of the class also has that question. Okay? So, ask anonymously. You don't have to ask anonymously, but if you're if you have any sense of embarrassment at all, you're worried, gee, I'm going to look stupid if I ask this question, then just post it anonymously. But please post it to the whole class. Okay. And the reason is very simple. If you have that question, other people may have that question too. Or other people may have the answer. Okay. I cannot monitor Piazza 24-7. Chances are other people will be monitoring it or paying attention to it, your classmates. And so if you ask a question, other people can answer it. If you ask a question directly to me, that's okay. But it's better if those type of questions pertain to issues specific to you. For example... Um, well, when it comes to the project, everybody's going to do individual projects. So you may have questions that you want to ask me privately uh, about the project. Again, if you ask on Piazza, I will notice it. My email address at the university is a general email address. I get a few hundred mail messages a day after spam is filtered. So um, I cannot respond to those questions as fast Partly because when I get a few hundred messages a day, in order to actually function, I basically have to ignore my mailbox, except at certain times when I'm going to process all those messages. If you ask a question on Piazza, it will get answered much, much faster. So those are your two key ways of asking questions. OK, um, back to the syllabus. Um, ask questions on Piazza, okay. Discussion will take place on Piazza or ask questions in video conferences. Um, broadly speaking, this is the class schedule. This, of course, is a schedule from when the course is offered in class, in, in lecture rooms. I will endeavor to have videos posted somewhat ahead of schedule. Um, in particular, the section on entity relationship modeling, the, uh, the section here, um, I, I, uh, ostensibly on week 10, I will probably provide that material earlier. Um, also, when it comes to the relational model, relational algebra and SQL, those are very interrelated, so different people may find it easier to do them in different orders. Okay, um, the uh, grades for the course, well, the requirements for the course are there will be four assignments covering four broad areas, um, SQL and relational algebra, normalization and indexes, transaction and performance, and data mining. They're worth collectively 20%. They're equally weighted, so 5% each. Um, the handouts is when the assignments become available and the due dates are likewise done. The handouts will be done on Mondays and they're due slightly over two weeks later, two weeks and a day later. The reason for handing them out on Monday is that way you have a chance to read them and think about them and write down some questions. And on our Tuesday meet time, uh, you can ask questions then, and the following week you may have more detailed questions. Okay, You can, of course, ask questions on Piazza at any time. Okay. In addition to that, the course is going to have a project that's worth 50%, okay. uh, broken down into uh, different components with different due dates, but Basically, 35% of the project, a total of 50, 35 of that 50 is at the end of the project. There's an initial proposal, a, a final proposal. So the initial proposal you're going to have to submit um, by two, two or three weeks from now. Let me see, the 22nd, that's um, 22nd minus eight, two weeks from now. Um, 
I will provide a separate video detailing project issues and a separate handout describing project issues. But broadly speaking, the reason the project is worth so much is two things. First of all, under the current circumstances, we cannot do uh, proctored examinations. So we will be having an exam. The, the exam is worth 30% of your final grade. And the reason for the exam is to cover the material broadly. However, in practice, many of you have worked for companies and I'm willing to bet that other than the possibility of having some tests that evaluate you prior to hiring, you've never actually had to write an exam for a company. It's not a particularly meaningful requirement in that sense. On the other hand, the project covers precisely the type of things that would be expected to be done for a company. Okay, The project will integrate things that you have done in all of the assignments. Okay, um, You're going to have to model data, etc. The key aspect of the project, though, the thing that will make it work effectively as compensating for the lack of proctored exams is each group or individual has to do their own project. Okay, The project is going to involve a non-trivial amount of data that you get from one of the internet data sources, and I will point that out in the project description. If somebody's already said they want that data set, then you're not going to be able to use it. Okay, we're going to have, so, so your projects will either be done individually or in groups of two. Everybody's doing their own thing. Okay, but the broad requirements will be the same. Okay. Uh, for legal purposes, the final deliverables of the project are considered part of the final exam. This satisfies the requirement that the university says you're not supposed to have deliverables other than an exam uh, uh, due past the last day of classes. Okay. Uh, if you get it in at the last day of classes, which is December 8th, if you get your final deliverables done by then, I'll give you some bonus for it. Otherwise, drop dead date is December 20th, because I'm going to have to evaluate all the projects in order to do grades. Um, also, if you notice, there is a video demo component that is worth 5%. That 5%, if you're willing to do an in-class, or not in-class, obviously, um, a video presentation to the class and take questions from the class, then I'll give a small bonus for that too. Um, don't ask me what the numbers are on that. Enough to make it worthwhile if you do it. Um, although arguably just getting everything done by the 8th is probably a better thing to do. Um, the later deadline is for the benefit of those who wait till too late and then discover they need stuff need more time or want more time so i'm giving them that okay so broadly speaking project 50 percent, assignments 20 percent, final exam 30 percent. now um letter grades are generally speaking better because students stress a lot less right? if you get an 82 it doesn't look as good as an 84 okay things like that so what I do, we're stuck with this percentage system at Waterloo. So what I do is I basically say, OK, as long as you've earned a certain grade in a range, I will give you the better of whatever your grade is or the nominal weight of that grade. So you're all hoping for A pluses, I'm sure. So grading scheme. If you think about it, suppose you earn a 91.2%. That's in the 90 to 100 range. I will give you a 95. Okay. If you earn a 96.3, I'll give you a 97. I'm not going to re reduce it down to 95. Okay. So... You will get the better of your earned grade 
and the nominal letter equivalent. If you earn an 85.3, that's in the 85 to 89 range, you're going to get an 89, because that's what an A corresponds to. This corresponds to an A+. Plus, okay? If you earn 89.1, you will get 90. Okay, That doesn't get you the 95, just for clarification purposes. Um, you may notice, if you look at the syllabus, that there is no C-. minus. Okay? So, as long as you earn over 60, you will get a 65, which means you'll pass the course. Okay? Um, just to clarify, because this shows up at times, if you earn a 50, uh, let's pick a nicer number than 52, let's say you earn a 62, I will give you a 65. You then come and say, yes, but you made a mistake on my exam grading. Could you please regrade my exam? At which point I'll say, OK, I regraded your exam and you got two more points. It doesn't mean you got 67. It means your 62 went to a 64, which is still a 65. OK, that's not me being mean. That's saying this is what you earned. I gave you this because this is what it rounded up to. You actually should have earned this, um, you still get a 65. So do think about what your actual earned grade is rather than what the number is that you received. Okay. If nothing else, it's intended to actually reduce your stress levels when it comes to what have you actually earned. Okay, you're aiming for an A plus. Aim for 90. As soon as you've got above 90. Anything extra, unless you get above 95, isn't worth it, okay? Because you're going to get a 95, okay? By way of example. Okay, course policies, a lot of this is boilerplate from general descriptions. And so, um, boilerplate, late assignments, late project submissions are not accepted. Um, submissions are going to be through a Dropbox on Learn, Um the timestamp on learn will be considered the uh, date, okay? Um, if you miss something, unless you've got a medical justification, then you get zero for that thing, okay? Um, standard boilerplate policy, okay? Um, if you have a medical reason, bear in mind that things like assignments, you're given two weeks to do the assignment. If you're sick for two days in those two weeks, I might give you a prorated grade, but realistically, you're going to get it in on time. Okay. If you're sick on the specific day the thing is due, uh, that means you were not sick for 13 out of 14 of the days. You get your documentation, you prove you're sick, I'll do a prorated adjustment to take into account that you were sick for one of the 14 days, okay? I, you, it's not reasonable to say um, you, you get to discount that unless you were sick for two weeks. And if you are sick for two weeks, you should be far more seriously worried about health issues than you are about other things. Collaboration and plagiarism. Okay, so you can do projects in groups of two rather than individually. That's okay. Which does bring up an issue, though. Whoops. Yes. Whoa. I'll do that. Project. If you do it individually, then you're just evaluated as is individually, and that's fine, all well and good. Assuming you don't collaborate or cheat okay collaboration good cheating bad um what's the difference if you're talking with your friends about code that's fine if you're sharing code that's a problem okay now suppose you do it in groups of two there's two of you there's a and b call you i don't know adam and barbara okay ahmed and i don't know we'll still go with barbara okay a and b At the end of term, someone comes along to me, A comes along to me and says, A tells me, B did nothing. 
Okay. Whoops. I can't do anything at that point. Okay. I may do a little bit. Okay. Broadly speaking, you, you're both expected to work on the project. You're both expected to contribute. You're both expected to spell out what contribution you did. And you will get an equal grade. Okay. If at the end of term A comes along and tells me B did nothing, there's not a lot I can do. Okay. If you are having difficulty with your partner on a project, don't wait till the end of term to tell me, because there's not much I can do at the end of term. I may make some modest adjustments, but broadly speaking, there's not a lot I can do. Um, if you tell me early on, we have the possibility of setting up a video conference and resolving the issues, okay? So... Do not wait till the end of term if there are projects. And for the vast majority of you, well, many of you may just do it individually. The vast majority of you who do work together, it will not be an issue. Okay, it's just periodically this shows up as a problem. So please don't do that. Um, remarking. Um, if you have remarking requests, do not wait till the end of term. Okay. Please get in your remarking requests within about a week or two of when you have received it. Okay. Um, there's broad university policies on academic integrity, grievance, discipline, appeals, etc. Again, um, please read this. Please make yourself familiar with it. I believe that's everything I need to discuss there will be a project description coming up, um, and that will be the subject of a separate video. For now, uh, welcome to the course again, and I hope your term goes well.